Hey everyone, this is Luca. I'm really excited to tell you that my course on the basics of R for ecologists is up and running. So if you're an ecologist and you're just getting started with R and feeling that frustration of the learning curve and just need something that can take you by the hand to really understand the solid fundamentals of using R for ecology, check out my course. Just go to r4ecology.com. There's a link also down below and uh, hope to see you there. Hey everyone, Luca here. Today I'm just gonna give you a really short tutorial on the basics of simple linear regression with R. So the most basic linear regression models the relationship between two numeric variables. And so to begin with, first we're going to load some data and we'll just use the data function in R data to load a data set called trees. And so when we run that line of code, we get these trees data here. So these data represent the measurements of the diameter, height, and volume of 31 black cherry trees. So note that girth is actually the diameter at breast height of each tree measured in inches. Height is the tree height in feet, and volume is the volume of the wood in cubic feet. So just for a little bit of clarity there, let's rename the column names of that data frame. And so we'll just do that by going name. So if we run the names function, that shows us what those column names are. But within that, we're going to replace those names with dbh for diameter at breast height in inches, height in feet, and volume in feet cubed. All right, so now if we run that and we take a look at this data frame again, we'll see that we've successfully changed the column names. All right, so for the basic linear regression, let's model how the tree diameter changes as the tree grows taller. So first we're gonna start out by writing what we actually want to model. So we want to know how dbh varies, we want to know how dbh varies as a function of tree height. And so we can write it out just like that, and we can actually use these column names to make it a little bit more specific. So how does dbh in inches vary as a function of tree height? And note that I use this little squiggly sign here, the tilde or tilde on my keyboard. I'm not sure where it is on all keyboards, but on my keyboard, it's just under the escape key on the top left part of the keyboard. Uh, and I hold down shift and press that key under the escape key to get this tilde symbol. And you'll see why it's important to know about this tilde symbol in a moment. But you can read this symbol as is a function of. So now we can look at this statement right here and say dbh in inches is a function of height in feet. And so we can think of our hypothesis for this regression as being this model that we've just come up with. Another way to think about it is dbh in inches is the y variable, height in feet is the x variable. And so the y variable or dbh in inches is also the dependent or the response variable. And so we can say, how does the y variable depend or respond to the x variable? Now, it's also important to note that we are not drawing any conclusions about the causal relationship between dbh and tree height. Uh, the linear regression analysis simply allows us to test the correlation or association of these two variables, but doesn't really tell us about what is affecting what. So let's begin by visualizing the relationship of dbh and height. And so the neat thing is we can use this formula here, this, this is a function of this, to make the plot as well. So we'll just use the plot function and then we'll say dbh in inches is a function of, whenever I say is a function of, it'll refer to this tilde symbol. Deviation in inches is a function of height in feet. And then we'll add one more argument here indicating the data set that this comes from, so, or the data frame. Data equals trees. And so let's run this line of code. And there we have it. A simple plot showing the relationship between 
dbh on the y-axis. Remember, dbh was the y variable here and height in feet on the x-axis. So as height changes, so does dbh. Apparently so, it looks like there might be some kind of positive relationship there. But that's what the linear regression is for. Let's see if there is actually a significant relationship there. Also, actually, before we move on, I'm not a big fan of these open circles. I think it looks a little better when the circles are closed, unless you have a lot of overlapping points. For example, here we have two overlapping points, which might be harder to see if the circles are filled in, but I think that's the small enough sacrifice to make this plot look a little better. So we'll just add in one more argument here going BCH equals 16, and that'll just make the points filled in. There we go. So to do the regression analysis, all we have to do is actually take the contents of this plot function and put it inside an LM function, which stands for linear model. So we'll just copy this. And we also have to refer to the data, so we'll add this in as well. And we're not actually plotting anything, so we don't need this, this PCH parameter here. But now if we run this, we get some of the results of the model. We actually get the estimate for the coefficient for the intercept and the slope as it's affected by height in this model. So it's not a lot to work with yet, but we can save this as its own object. So we'll just call it mod. And then we can apply the summary function to mod. And when we run that, we get some more interesting information here. So first we can see the distribution of the residuals or the unexplained variation in the model with the minimum value of the residual, the maximum, the median, and the first quartile and third quartile range. But below that, it gets more interesting. Here we have a table of the coefficients. So again, before, when we, without running the summary function, we just got this value for the intercept coefficient and the slope coefficient, how height is associated with dbh. Then in this second column, we have the standard error around that estimate of the coefficient. Then we have the test statistic, in this case, a t-value for each of these estimates. And finally, maybe what everyone's really wanting to look for is the p-value or the significance of each of these coefficients. So to think about these coefficients and what the significance means, think of it as what a linear model actually is. A linear model is simply y equals a plus bx. So to model a straight line or a linear line as is described by a linear model, um, you need two coefficients. First, you have this intercept value or the A in this case, which represents where the line crosses over zero. And then you have this uh, B coefficient or the slope coefficient, which, which is multiplied by X to show you the rate at which that line or the angle at which that line changes with respect to X. So what a linear regression actually does is it tries to optimize the value of the intercept and the slope to create a line that best describes this relationship of points between height and dbh. And then we can use a statistical test to see if these coefficients are actually significantly different from zero. So after this little table here, we have a little bit more information here. We've got uh, well, we've got these significant codes, which are just these asterisk symbols placed at the end of the p-value to quickly visualize which of these might be statistically significant. But then down here, we have the residual standard error, which indicates the variation of unexplained variance around the regression line. Then we have the multiple r squared, which can be thought of as the proportion of variance that uh, in the data that can be explained by the model. So you can ignore the adjusted R squared for now uh, if you're just starting out. Maybe I'll talk about that in a future lesson. And then finally, we have the F statistic and P value that tests whether all the coefficients in the model are zero. So next, let's actually add this best fit line to this, to this plot since we can see that height is actually a significant coefficient. Uh, excuse me, the slope is a significant coefficient suggesting that height is significantly associated with diameter at breast height. So let's go ahead and plot that line. Let's go back to our script here. And so to add a line to this model, all you have to do is run the original plot that we created. So I'll just run this one more time. 
and then add in the function a b line. Remember the a and the b that I was using to, to explain how a linear model works. So a b line uses a slope and an intercept to create a line. And a b line actually will take the, uh, the model that we had fit as its main argument and create the line from those coefficients. So there it is. That is the best fit line through these points. So finally, let's say that you need to extract a table with the regression results. So here's a cool trick for quickly extracting a neat table using the package called broom. So first you need to install dot packages and ins run this if you haven't installed broom yet. If you have installed it, you don't ever have to run it again unless you reinstall R on a new machine or uninstall your packages for some reason. Um, so I'm just going to comment that out. But but after you finish installing it, run library broom to load up that package. So you have to run the library function each time you want to load up a package, but the install is only, only the very first time you install it on your machine. And then we're going to use this function called tidy to create a table of the results to extract a neat table of the results from our model. And so now the argument will just be mod again, our model. And so note that this table is actually called a tibble, which is better than a normal data frame, but that's for another lesson. So thanks for watching this video. If you liked it and would like to see more like it, just hit subscribe below. If you want to see my full courses on R for Ecologists, just see the link below. And otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.